You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Swanson from WallStreetWindow.com. Happy New Year, Mike. Oh, thank you. It's great to talk with you. It looks like the new year on the markets didn't start off so happy. No, well, it's interesting. I, I I actually like to take the time after Christmas and between New Year's to look at the stock market because usually nothing happens and just try to figure out what happened the year before, where are things going, and is anything going to change. And one of the funny things about it, if you think back to uh, the beginning of last year, I saw this uh, video uh, of, of Kramer really excited about the stock market. This is like January 2014, one of the very first couple trading days. And people, generally speaking, were, were extremely excited uh, about the market a year ago uh, because they were pretty much expecting what happened in 2014 to repeat in 2015. So they were looking for more stock gains to come and, and to make more money and see their accounts grow. And then in 2015, really nothing happened. Uh, I mean, the stock market was down just a, a very tiny amount. But really, the market averages themselves are like in an 8% range all year long. Now, in August, we did see a quick short lev dump uh, and then a rebound in October. It didn't manage to take the market back up to a new high or anything, but it was a bit of volatility there. But if you take those, you know, a couple of weeks out uh, in September and October uh, in late August, really nothing happened all year. And what's funny is when the year began, everyone was expecting really 2014 to repeat. And now, as this year begins, um, uh, I think people were kind of expecting 2015 to repeat. It's like when every year starts, people just kind of assume what they've gone through the past 12 months is going to repeat again. And what happens, though, is it doesn't. And things change. Markets go through cycles. And I think what we're witnessing at the start of this week is that is, is a change in, in the cycles where we were ending a bull market last year and making a transition into a, a new bear market. And I think that transition is, is simply just going to complete over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, the big warning sign, of course, is uh, in 2015, even though the market averages didn't do much and most investment funds didn't do much, actually most stocks went down. Uh, as, as we're speaking right now, only 35% of the stocks on the New York Stock Exchange are above their 200 day moving averages. And what happened was it was only a couple stocks that did really well uh, last year. Uh, and by December, it was <laughs> everyone uh, in the United States, so in the financial media, they were focusing on Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google and calling them FANG stocks, giving them this nickname to try to get people excited about them because they want people to be excited about something, and that was the only thing that they were excited about. And those are the top stocks. And what happens is when you enter, uh, as you approach the end of the year, the people owning those stocks really had no reason to sell them. I mean, they just kind of said, well, we'll just wait till this year uh, because of tax reasons, you know, delay their taxes. So anyone who was thinking that, they simply waited to January, uh, the first trading day of January and hit the sell button. So now all those stocks that were so hot and popular, they took an a little bit of a tumble off, you know, there's so called hotness <laughs> over the past couple of days. So that's what's going on at the moment. But, uh, you know, right now the S&P 500, it's got support around 1990. It's the low of December. And people that have bought last month expecting a giant rally to happen in January, um, they're going to be watching that level and hopefully the market can bounce for a little bit maybe a couple of days or something off that level. and uh, But if it goes through it or closes below it, I think it's going to see, we're going to see some more selling because anyone who bought looking at that level will, will kind of get upset about it. Well, Mike, it seems to me we're running, if we go with cycles, about three weeks ahead of schedule. 
Yes, usually if we have a downturn, it's in September or October, but we saw it happen in August. Usually there's a bit of a downturn late in January, but we're seeing it right now. I, I think we're kind of three weeks ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I, I think that's a good observation. Um, and, you know, what's the reason for that? I mean, it's who knows. Uh, it could be the, these trading programs that really are having a huge impact on the stock market when, with short-term trading, or it could just simply be that, you know, we've known that everyone has kind of caught on to that and they're front-running it, or who, who knows what the reason is. But I, it really does seem like you're right about that. Um, and, and actually, even in 2014, there was a correction that really uh, started in the middle of September and ended in the first week of October. Normally, those fall drops also come a little bit later, three weeks later, actually, which, as you're speaking, as you noted, uh, than it did then, too. So it, it is an interesting thing. Yeah, instead of uh, sell in May, go away, it might be sell in April, don't tell Maple this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I, I think it's best just to sell now, to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 well, let me put you this way. Um, in the bear markets, it's actually kind of flips. And I think we're in a bear market. So I, I really think the market's going to break that low of 1990 on the S&P 500 uh, probably this month and, and go back down to the uh, August lows. And it'll probably end up breaking that too. But but regardless, in, in bull markets, usually in January and February, things don't go down and test lows like that. They, they end up making new highs, um, even if there's a little bit of a dip or pause there. They do end up making a new high, usually in the first quarter. That's what they did in 2014, for example. Now, in 2015, they made a new high and just didn't go anywhere. Uh, but in bear markets, something different actually tends to happen, usually – you actually drop into into the spring, usually March, April, uh, and then have some sort of a bounce uh, or rebound uh, in the summer. So I actually kind of think that's more likely, and the the, the pattern, the seasonal pattern, uh, could play out that way. Where you know someone who wants to buy stocks, it doesn't like to bet against them, which is actually what what I'm doing. But people who only like to buy stocks, when it comes to the U.S. stock market. They're probably best just to be patient and wait and, you know, let things have some sort of a correction or, or, or something like that, or at least a panic sell-off at the market. <clears throat> now, there's other things though, that actually I think look bullish. Uh, I looked through all the individual commodities over the weekend, and just about all of them look like they want to at least have some sort of a bounce, and some of them could really you know, have really nice bases and, and really could take off. Uh, if you look at, for example, gold, it's just basing out here, and it's got resistance in the 1080 to 1090 area, which is, you know, right above it. And if it breaks through that, uh, it can easily have a really good rally. And if it goes through the highs of, of uh, November, uh, which is about 100 points away from that, about 1,190, then it'd be making doing something it hasn't done since 2011, which is making a higher high uh and that would become a very bullish development and the funny thing is um as we entered this year too uh, the fed of course raised rates in december and they said uh, or projected that they are going to raise rates four times this year and that is an expectation people had going into this year and if they don't do that that's going to be bullish for gold and make the dollar go down in value too and I think that's very likely to happen because um, yesterday on CNBC, uh, they had the famous economist who's always bullish on the stock market, but he's quoted all the time uh, because he's got uh, uh, bullish opinions. And any, Anyway, Jeremy Siegel, um, he was on there, and he made some really interesting remarks. He said um, as a reaction to the drop yesterday that the Fed won't raise four times um, this year, as they were saying. And he remarked that a week ago he thought they would. He was sure they would. Now he doesn't think they will. So the point is that's an example of how just a little drop in the stock market will make the Fed not raise rates four times, which is going to be very bullish for gold. 
And if the stock market does like I think it will, then that's what's going to happen. I mean, it, it seems as if the 2000 level in the S&P 500 is some sort of key level, not just for uh, people trading the market, but for people interested in, in interest rates and what the Fed's going to do. And as long, so as long as the market S&P 500 is above 2000, they can raise rates four times. But if it's <laughs> below 2000, then they're going to be scared to do it. And that's actually what we saw happen last year, uh, because in July, they were predicting that they'd raise rate in the September meeting. Of course, that August drop happened, and the S&P went below 2000, and they backed off. So that 2000 level is really a key level. And if the market goes below that, it's going to be bullish for gold. So I'm shorting stocks. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm I use ETFs to do it, but I'm also betting against some individual stocks that I really think the companies have, uh, have gotten themselves in bad financial positions. They got a lot of debt and uh, they're doing financial games <clears throat> to make their earnings look exciting and uh, they're just junk, basically. So that, that's what I'm doing, but I know a lot of people don't like to do that sort of thing and only want to buy stuff. Um, they only want to go long. And for those people, I think they should just buy gold and silver and other commodities, too, that can be traded. You know, you can trade commodities in the futures market, which is complicated for most people. But there's ETFs now where you can do the same thing. Um, some of the ETFs are tricky, though, because they own futures contracts and options, and they have a decay factor. But they can be used for swings, you know, uh, for a couple weeks or even a couple months if you catch something in the right direction. And just about all the commodities have nice bases on them and, and they can break through some resistance points um, in the first quarter and do really well. Uh, so I, I, it's interesting, you know, everyone's bearish pretty much on commodities because they've fallen for so long or did fall for so long. And it's all this talk about the Fed raising rates makes people not want to mess with them, but let these themes change, and, and all of a sudden, uh, it's going to be a much different market this year than it was last year, even though, as we began this year, people were expecting more of the same, but things change. Well, of course, you know, it used to be a four-year cycle. Now we're past six years for an expected downturn in the markets. You knew it had to happen if it wasn't sooner than later. Well, that's true, but... <laughs> What happens, though, is, is the longer something goes on, the more and more people actually get well, get convinced that what they're in is something that's just going to last forever. And most people don't really look at six-year cycles or three-year cycles or cycles, period. They just look every day at what they see um, and then, you know, they just look at the news and see the market up or down. And when you're in a bull market like you were in 2014, they see it go up just about every day. They did that in 2032. And the way your brain works, you can't, re it's very difficult to remember. I can't tell you what I was doing on July the 8th, 2012. I, I have no idea, but I know where I was that week last year, uh, actually. <laughs> so you can, you can only remember, but so far back um, in time, and what that does to people when it comes to the financial markets, if you're not looking at charts that go back a couple years or, or, or looking at these cycle trends and only you thinking about what your, your, your mind is seeing every day with these up or down moves, then you kind of get stuck into uh, the pattern of just thinking, well, what happened the past six months or the past 12 months? And, is the environment I'm in, and then, like I was saying before, or several times, then it changes, and you don't know, you're not ready for it. So, you know, I'm just speaking what the average person's doing, or does, and, and, and they essentially don't analyze anything, basically. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, but what'll happen, what that means for the market in, 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 uh, in gold and, and all this kind of stuff is, uh, if, if commodities go up, for six months at some point, then people will start to get bullish on them. But it's not impossible for most people to get bullish on them until that happens. And same thing with the stock market. I mean, it hasn't fallen yet. I mean, I'm just talking about it going into more of a drop, when it, assuming it's going to break the August lows. It's only 
fallen a little bit uh, to start the year, uh, although some stocks uh, are, are falling quite a good percentage. I mean, Apple looks terrible. It's fallen quite a bit from its July high. It's kind of a sad stock now. We'll have more with Mike Swanson right after the break. Unbelievable harmonies, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel, Bird Dog, and the Vintage Electric Band, Saturday, January 9th at the Alex Goulden Hall. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. More and more people are looking to the Internet for intelligent, riveting, and thought-provoking interviews. To advertise on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com, call 604-699-8600, 604-699-8600. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Swanson. Mike, China saw the Shanghai Exchange shut down after a 7% loss now the Chinese government has come up with a new stimulus plan. Are they just throwing good money after bad? Well, I, I, it's, I tell you something interesting about that. In in uh, July, uh, they announced some emergency measures to try to stop the stock market there from dropping because it was crashing. It was really a really nasty situation. Um, and one of the measures they announced was they were going to halt uh, insider selling for state-owned corporations, which almost all of them have some sort of a connection to the government. So they banned large block selling or, or, or large shareholders from selling the, the stock. Uh, I mean, imagine that. You have a stock market, and they just ban selling. I mean, that's – but that's what they did. But the thing about that decision is um, you cannot uh, operate – a stock market uh, for very long if you don't allow people to sell the shares they own. It's, that's not a stock market. Um, and so they had a, it was a temporary measure, uh, and it expired on Monday. Uh, so Monday came, and obviously these people started selling their stock because uh, the their market melted down 7% when they had to halt trading again. So they, they got a real mess. And uh, I, mean, it, 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 I think a lesson from this is when a bear market gets going, um, that the government really can't stop it. And we saw the same thing in the United States in 2008. They banned short selling in the summer of, of bank stocks, and the bank stocks still crashed. Um, and the Fed lowered rates to zero, and the stock market still didn't stop it from dropping. Uh, so one thing that's happened over the past couple of years because of the length of the bull market, especially the run in 2013 and 2014 where there was no pullback of, 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 of any significance. And even last year there was a dip in August, but it wasn't even a 10% dip. So people have been kind of lulled to sleep, I think, in regards to the risks in the market. Now, last year people didn't make any money for the most part. And most people probably – actually lost money that because the market was down a little bit. But it wasn't a big amount of money uh that you know that it was that, that they probably lost. It's kind of like a wash, let's say. Um so but they did so <clears throat> but the point though is uh that they are still complacent because they didn't really lose anything and they haven't seen any real drop in the stock market for years. So most people in the market really have no worry about things. They kind of have do have an assumption that the Fed made the stock market go up. They believe even can continue to just step in and make do make the market do what they want. But in the end, when bear markets get going, that's not what happens. China should be the lesson and warning sign for us about that. And people really don't have a real understanding of what the Fed did to make the stock market go up, uh, which they weren't buying stocks or doing something manipulative in that sense. What they did is they created a quantitative easing money printing program that bought bonds. They printed money out of air and bought bonds with it, not stocks. They bought bonds, um, and they flooded the Treasury bond market with buying which kept interest rates low, and money that normally would go into treasury bonds from private individuals or uh, investors, endowments, and just anyone investing in, in financial markets, 
it, 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 the government sucked out buying from them that would have gone into there, so it floated into the corporate bond debt market. And interest rates on junk bonds and corporate bonds reached a super low level at the beginning of 2013. Well, what happened was the corporations in the United States took advantage of these low rates uh, to go and borrow money and issue bonds, and many of them use that money to buy back their shares from the stock market floating out there in the stock exchanges, thereby helping pump their stock prices up. Um, and that's what made the stock market go up. That's how the Fed helped fuel the bull market. Now, what's happened is the debt has gone so crazy that it's unsustainable for many, most of these companies. In some, in, in the past year, they've individually, a couple of them have blown up. IBM did it two years ago. Caterpillar did it. 3M did it. Um, and there's a bunch of minor ones that have done it. The sad, nasty story about this, though, is that there's companies, and I'll just, I'll just, uh, name one, uh, but Sirius Radio is one example. They've gone over two billion dollars in debt and, um, uh, excuse me, they, they they've doubled their debt in three years, and they've bought back two billion dollars worth of stock off the stock market, and they only make about a fifth of that in net income in a year. Uh, they're buying back five times as much stock as they even make in income by going into debt. And then the insiders for this company are selling it. I don't have a position in this, but I'm looking at possibly shorting it or, or buying put options on it. But there's lots and lots of companies like this. And, and the other part of this is the insiders as a whole in corporate America, they've been doing heavy insider selling uh, over the past 12 months, uh, really picking it up. And I mentioned Apple before. The insiders for Apple liquidated 16% of their holdings in the past six months. I have no confidence in owning a stock in a company in which the insiders feel that it's best in their interest to liquidate 16% of their holdings. Um, and there's some stocks, so they've liquidated even more than that. Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> donut company. The insiders have dumped over 30% of their shares last year. And this kind of stuff's going on. You could just look at, if you own stocks, look, go type in the ticker symbols on Yahoo Finance. And if the insiders are dumping more than 15%, in six months, maybe you should look into the financials or wonder why you're buy you, know, you still own the stock. Because uh, I, I just don't have confidence to own companies where that's going on. I want them to be buying shares, or at least you know. I understand you know, sometimes these people have programs that they sell shares on a regular basis. Bill Gates did that when he had when <clears throat> when he had Microsoft, and of course he sold off almost his entire position too. Every single share he owned about two years ago, which is something to think about if you are a Microsoft person. But regardless, for years though, he was doing regular insider selling in order to make it. So no one would say, well, something must be crazy here. But at this point though, if many of these companies, it's, it's not regular, uh, programs like that. It's just a sudden surge of this insider selling in the past 12 months. Mike, that's some great advice. Thanks a lot for chatting with us. Thank you. It's great talk with you. My guest has been Mike Swanson from WallStreetWindow.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.